I'm sure you've seen a candlestick cheat sheet pattern like this before, but have you ever seen one like this? Many videos on YouTube talk about candlestick patterns, but no video on YouTube truly teaches you to understand them. Taking a deeper dive into what each candlestick means will unlock your ability to read the market. Without this, you are just blindly copying patterns and you will probably not become profitable. And so what we wanna do is truly understand what a candlestick is telling us. For this dragonfly doji right here, what it's telling us is the market opened up here, went up a tiny bit, sold off hard, and then reversed back up, closing here. And so as you get better at this, you can start to read into more and more candlesticks at a time. And so what this pattern is truly telling us is the market went up in a pretty clear, concise uptrend, and then all of a sudden, it just ripped lower out of nowhere. And so this is a strong reversal pattern for many reasons. The first thing that a lot of people don't realize is that this chart pattern is creating a upwards channel on a smaller time frame. And reading into the candlesticks tells us that. And of course, anytime you see a channel or trend line broken, well, that is a reversal signal. And then the next thing is the size of this candle. Look how large it is. It closes below the lows of the last three candles. And so this is showing a massive switch in momentum. It's showing you that the speed at which the market reversed is way faster than the speed that it went up. Now that you know this, you can use this on an actual chart in your trading because in reality, those cheat sheets, the market does not often fit what those exactly mean, but you can still understand what the market is doing and find those patterns. For an example right here, this has that same candlestick pattern but it just does not look as clean. But if you take a deeper dive into the candlesticks and read what they're saying, the market still is making that consistent uptrend. And then all of a sudden, it just rips back lower, breaking that nice little uptrend that the market had made and closing way below the last few candlesticks, showing you a big change in momentum in the market. And the power of these is you can spot the reversals in the market. That reversal pattern right here pretty much signaled the final push higher before the market reversed back lower. But when it comes to these patterns, you always want to use them as a final confirmation. You do not want to be taking a trade off of these without looking at the larger trend. For example, right here, this is a really clean three candlestick reversal pattern. You have a strong bullish bar up, followed by a doji that is showing you that the market's losing momentum, and then a strong bearish bar back lower. But because this isn't at a resistance level, it is unlikely to push the market back lower. And so that's a really big mistake to do is just blindly reversing when you see one of these patterns. Another big one is trying to force a trade when the pattern is not actually very clear. It's very normal to see a resistance level and be looking to take a trade off of that and then jumping in when the signal is really not very clear. When it comes to the market, you always wanna be very picky about what you do because that is gonna increase your win rate. The non-profitable traders will try and cut corners and force bad signals when they really should just be cutting those out and waiting for these strong signals. For example, this right here is kind of like the pattern that we have been looking at in terms of the market is in a nice move up. And then all of a sudden we have a big bearish reversal candle at a resistance zone or the previous highs. And that can be a good enough signal that someone wants to jump in on. But if you look at this, this red candle here has not even closed below the low of the previous green candle. And so it hasn't given that massive move lower that we had in this example right over here, you can see this one is way different compared to this one. And so that's what you wanna be doing when you're actually using these patterns as confirmation is you have to wait for it to look like this and not like this one. Because what will end up happening if you do get in on trades like this, the signal is not as strong and your trades will not work out as often. And I'm sure you're just like me, I wanna be in trades all the time, but if you're patient and wait for these kind of clear patterns, you will be way more profitable in the long run. Now, an important thing when it comes to trading, either continuation patterns or reversals, is always look for a pullback. For an example, if the market is in a downtrend, 
you wanna be looking for a strong confirmation that the downtrend is actually over first. And that can be a pullback a lot of the time because otherwise you're just gonna be blindly buying into the downtrend and it's gonna be very easy for you to lose a lot of money. For example, the market right here looks like it could potentially starting to reverse. We have a lot of big bullish candles where the market is just sending it up. And then all of a sudden we start to get some red candles, some dojis, and the market starts reversing. Now this might look like a great spot to get in short and catch this move back lower, but doing that will get you in trouble more times than it is worth. It's always better to wait for a confirmation that the market is starting to slow down. And so what that looks like is, let's say we did get in right here, short, and our, our stops up here, betting that the market's gonna go lower. Well, the market isn't quite done with this uptrend yet, and it breaks a little bit higher, knocking you out of that trade. And so what you do if you are more patient and wait for the market to, you know, chop around here a little bit more, it makes another little top here, it sells off a little bit more, and these candles right here with this dojis, they're showing you, yes, the market is starting to lose momentum. And if you take all these candles into account, comparing it to this move up, the market has definitely shifted from an uptrend to a sideways trend, which shows you a loss of momentum and shows you that, yeah, the market is starting to look like it's gonna reverse. And so now that the market has put in a lower high up here, that is a good signal that the market has essentially pushed up, made a pullback right here, and then it's going to potentially, if it breaks below here, sell off really far down. And so that's what we wanna be looking for in the market as a confirmation for these trades. Now, when it comes to using candlestick patterns as your confirmation to get in a trade, you have to have to stay away from when the market is consolidating. When the market looks like this and the market's just all over the place, you have to stay out because there are multiple things going on here that can mess you up as a trader. First off, the market is in a very tight range. And so even if you have a good signal, let's say to take a buy off of this low down here and bet that the market's gonna go up, it is unlikely that you are gonna get that much movement out of the market, making your risk reward very poor on the trade. And when we're trading, we wanna go for spots with good risk reward because that's gonna make us more profitable in the long run. And when it comes to being in the trade, it is never gonna be a clean move up where the market's very easy to stay with. It's gonna be very choppy and all over the place and hard to stay in the trade. And as well, another bad thing is the market is going to make a lot of signals because if you're looking for either double tops or some kind of retest of an area, well, the market is all over the place. You can see it's making a lot of moves and a lot of patterns to potentially take a trade off of. But in reality, these are false patterns because there is not the likelihood that the market's gonna actually do anything off those patterns. And so you need to stay away from markets like this. And then the last big thing is always use a higher time frame to look for the overall trend. I really like trading reversals. And so for me, I look at a higher time frame just to see where the market is bouncing off of for reversals. And so right now, on a 15 minute chart, the market has a lot of really strong lows down here, which says, hey, the market's probably likely to reverse and find support there again. And so if you dive into a smaller time frame and actually enter in on the trade, because scalping in the market, you do wanna be with the overall trend and that's what the bigger time frame is gonna give you. But the smaller time frame is going to give you that accurate entry. And then of course, what you can do is you can see that, hey, the market bounced off that big support level, and then it made some kind of retest and pullback that we like to see as a confirmation, and then it made some kind of reversal pattern on a candlestick level, showing you that in an even smaller time frame that the market is reversing there. Now to bring everything together, here is a live example of a trade using everything I've taught you in this video. Now, first off, we have a big resistance zone up here that I'm looking to bet that the market's gonna go lower off of. And then next we have the market make a high and then we're just waiting for that pullback. And then zooming in even further, we wanna look for that candlestick pattern. And right here, Order we have filled. that candlestick pattern. 
the market has made multiple moves higher with its previous candles, making that kind of chill uptrend. And then we have that massive red bar moving down, showing that rejection and that reversal pattern coming into play. And from there, I just like to get in. And then I like to put my stop above that most extreme high put in because I like to use the price of the market to hold my trade because, hey, if the market decides to break through that high, we're probably in an uptrend and I want to cut my losses and get out and just move on to the next trade. But as this trade keeps going and as we've started to break lower, once the market does that, I like to move my stop to break even because I like taking risk off the table. And then I like to use a trailing stop. I like to slowly move down with the pullbacks that the market makes. And so I can slowly capture the profits as the market moves down. Now I did make a video that walks a little bit more in depth into this. You can check that out. But when you're first starting out, I would suggest just go with a fixed profit target of two or three times your risk because that is going to be way simpler. The market is very complicated when you first start out and you want to make things easier on yourself. Do not try and do too many things at once. The number one thing that you need to do in the beginning is focus on your entries. If you can get good entries, you will be profitable. Figuring out where to put your profit target and how to get out of a trade, keep it simple because really that is kind of min maxing. And in reality, if you just stick with a fixed profit target, you're going to be good and you're going to still become profitable if you can get these entries down. And so I only after years of trading have just started to become comfortable moving with the swings down. And so it adds a lot more complexity, but you can capture more profits sometimes, which is very exciting when it comes to trading. When you are managing trades, if you are doing a fixed stop loss and your target does go into, you can see down here, I do have a support zone. That's usually where you want to start tidying up your trade because this is a likely area where the market's going to reverse. And so if you have a fixed profit target, you're going to want to probably get out before then. Do not try and put your profit target like this below the level because it's likely that the market comes down I here and down. reverses. And so I got out of that trade right there for a nice 450 in profit. And you can see that was a really good spot to get out because now the market has reversed. So you have to be really smart with how you manage trades. So definitely take that slow focus on the entries. And so if you want to learn more about how I trade, check this video out right here. And if you want to just learn everything I know about trading, I do have a course that I link in the description below.